Whoops. <laughs> Wrong button. Well, good evening and welcome to Awakening True Image and Likeness broadcast. I am your host tonight. My name is Jal Kheru. And it's always a pleasure to be able to welcome you here. I know it is going to be a tremendously great evening tonight. I want to go into the comment section. Just welcome everyone. Ch Chanel Becker, uh, all the way from Tolva. It's good to see you. Martin van Sale, always good to see you. Joe May Webster and Bewe, oh, wonderful to see you. Yvette Britz, good to see you. Joanny Swart, uh, Madeleine Marais, Chris Manning, Dean and Cynthia Ferreira, all the way from the United States of Benoni. Kirsten Blimmers, good to see you. Reino de Beer, Pastor Reino de Beer, good to see you. Ronel Pence, always, always good to see you. Gert Mans, he now by us. Gert and Marine Mans, good to see you all. Good to see you all. Sylvia JV van Rensberg, good to see you all. Linda Mans, here from Artenbos, the world, good to see you all. Well, it's good to see you. I am looking forward to tonight. Um, I know what is going to take place here tonight is going to truly bless you. I know that our guest speaker here tonight has got a message all the way from the heart of God. And I know that um, he is ready to deliver this message. And are you ready? That's my question to you tonight. Are you ready to receive? So go into the comment section. Just say that I am ready. Uh, because see, if you are not ready, you are wasting your time. You have to be ready. Your heart has to be prepared. You have to be sitting here with an open mind to learn, to grow, and to allow God to do what he needs to do in your life. All right, so I want to go. Are you commenting? Say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I am ready. Oh, Cliff, good to see you. Uh, Charmaine Irwin, always good to see you as well. Stephanie Arnell, good to see you. Well, you know, tonight um, I just want to say thank you to each and every person that is uh, contributing to this program, uh, you know, they, uh, and also to this ministry. This ministry is a global ministry, uh, it is reaching the world. Um, it is not just. Uh, uh, a ministry that is locally, it is truly has got its footprint all around the world and it's expanding and is growing. And the Lord is truly using this ministry as a conduit to bring his glory and his love to this world. So thank you for your contribution. Um, we are praying for you and, and this is good soil. So you can expect a good return back. And we are truly praying exactly that for you, that if when where you are possibly now in the red, you will go into the green with your finances, that new fresh uh, income streams comes into your life and that the Lord will just truly take you into a new level concerning your finances. So thank you very much for that. And then also I want to ask you to please like, share and subscribe to this video. You can like and subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel. Go on to DDT's on Ministries. Uh, on, on YouTube, you'll find it there. Please, please, please subscribe. We are almost at a thousand uh, subscribers. Now, why, why do you want us to, to do this? Well, simple thing is the benefit for you is that uh, the moment we go live with whatever video or whenever we place a video, you get a notification that there is a video on and you will never, ever, ever miss a live stream or a video that is placed from us on YouTube. And also, it helps us to take the message of the gospel into the world. So a thousand um, is, is a goal. And then the next one is going to be two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five, six, and, and whatever the case may be. But it's simply a goal that we want to reach. Uh, so we want to get to a thousand so that we are able to just really amplify what we are doing here. So please go to DDT's on Ministries on YouTube, like, subscribe. And uh, then the next thing is comment. Comment on Facebook, comment on YouTube. Let your fingers do the talking. Say yes, say amen, say hallelujah. When Pastor D Davi says something awesome, say praise Jesus. Just go bonkers on comments because the comments, the more you comment, the more you like, the more you share, the more we open the algorithm. So this algorithm is a funny business. If you do not comment, it just lies there. It does no work for you. But the more you work it, the more you comment on it, the more you interact on it, you tell this uh, mechanism that Facebook has offered us that there's something significant and special here. And then it says, okay, I'm taking this video that is so great and I'm taking it up and I'm taking up into the ranks and more and more people are able to see it. And that's what you call viral. It just goes viral. So we want to go viral. Let's make Pastor Darby tonight viral by commenting as much as possible in the comment section um, so that we are able to say, take Jesus to the world and, you know, somebody somewhere around the world, maybe in Russia, you know, the other day I, I shared, we actually got a comment from Ukraine. 
Imagine that. A comment from Ukraine where the war is going on. Maybe somebody was sitting in one of those trenches and he was listening to Dean or Cynthia or Pastor Davi or whoever the case may be. And they were like, wow, I need to do a comment here. I am listening. I'm receiving. So see, it's not just about South Africa. It's about everybody around the world. And you do not know who you are touching when you are sharing and commenting and just bringing your part into this. So please like, share, subscribe, comment on the social media platforms so that we can take it further. Once again, I want to thank uh, or welcome. Just uh, go into the comment section. Yvonne True, good to see you. Chantal Chetty, always good to see you as well. Good evening and welcome. Pastor Renata Hector, all the way from Imalahleni. Good to see you as well. Graeme Lewis, good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Anton Botma, altijd goed om jou te zien. Welcome, good evening. Um, let's see who is on the platform before I introduce and welcome our speaker for tonight, Ernest Edward Cindy Nicholson. Always good to see you. Hello, Prem. I'm sorry I didn't have time to chat with you, but yes, I'm fast. I'm like lightning. Uh, good to see you. Nomtan Dazo Chauke. I'm going to meet you for the first time this weekend. It's good to see you as well. Uh, Cornelia Nagel. Good to see you. Good to see you. Well, um, that is enough about me. I want to introduce our next speaker. Um, he is a friend of the ministry. All of you know um, him by now. Um, Pastor Davi Peters are all the way from Marble Hall. Um, he is a friend of the ministry. He is, uh, well, I always joke, he's become my pastor. He will call me up and he will even do house visits here in Hartenbos. Uh, but yeah, he is, he is a precious, precious friend and somebody who... I have learned a lot from, and I know you will learn from tonight. Well, welcome, Pastor Davi. It is great to have you with us. I'm going to hand the platform over to you. Enjoy. God bless you, everyone. Here is Pastor Davi. Thank you, Jacques. And what a wonderful opportunity coming to you in your house all the way here from Marble Hall. And I'm excited about tonight and from my side to Prophet Didi. And sirs, thank you, wonderful friends of ours. We love them dearly, and we thank God for what he's doing. Uh, I want to encourage you to pray for Pastor Didi as he's busy ministering here in South Africa. And the, the reports that I hear when I'm speaking to him, God is moving mightily, mightily at all the meetings. So keep on praying for him, for his protection, for his health, and that God will just increase um, the word and the the gift of healing through his life and the prophetic word. Just keep on praying for him. I know um, Sis is also coming this week and we're looking forward to seeing her. But it's great being with you. And I hope where you are that you are relaxing, ready. You've got your Bible, hopefully a cup of coffee and just ready to, just to allow heaven to speak to us tonight. But before I want to speak, um, I just want to release something over Pastor Francois Maritz. This morning, as I, you know, started waking up, suddenly I saw uh, Pastor Francois in my spiritual eye. And I saw him standing and there was a thin layer between the next season. And I want to, I want to declare over your life, Pastor Francois, previously it was thick, difficult to get through and into the next season. But I, I saw it's a thin layer. And then I saw how you were tearing up an opening, an opening to go through. And what I just saw, the picture that I saw, you are, your one feet is through the opening to enter in. So I encourage you tonight, get ready. I just see a glory is coming to your ministry and to your family and I say again, there's a thin layer. It's easy. It's easy. You're breaking through. Like I said, there's an opening. And, and what I saw, your, your feet is, is through the opening. And you are ready to enter in. So I release that word over you. May you experience tonight the beginning of something new. And Pastor Francois, be ready for the next season. It's going to be amazing. And we declare that over your life in Jesus name so family I trust that that you're ready that your hearts are open we are living in exciting times challenging times definitely 
But I want to I want to say he's preparing his body in this time and season. And I believe God is speaking and what I feel in my heart about two books in the Bible. Um, and the last few months that is just speaking to my spirit through these two books. And it's the book of Revelation and the book of Song of Solomon. Now in, in our church, we are busy going through Song of Solomon and there's such amazing things God is releasing through that. But God is preparing an end time bride that will look like him. I'm excited about what we're going to see happen in the body of Christ. And he's getting us ready that we're going to rise up this magnificent bride that will stand and will, will be different. And more than just understanding, having my inheritance in him, we will understand that he's got inheritance in us. The, the bride is growing up. So, um, but I don't want to talk about the Song of Solomon. Uh, there's some great things out of that. But hold on to your chairs. Tonight, I'm talking out of the book of Revelation. And get ready. God is about to, to do something um, in your life and what you're going to experience. And I'm going to start tonight. And I'm starting Revelation 1 verse 1. And let us go to the Word. It says, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by the angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all the things that he saw. Blessed is he that reads and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Then verse 4. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also, and they also which bless him, and all kindreds of the earth shall because of him. Even so, amen. He declares in verse 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. And then John says, I, John, who also am your brother and companion. And look at this. Tribulation and in kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. Look at that again. It says tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. And the translation says in Jesus Christ. And we are living in the time of the, of the kingdom. But when we walk with the, in the kingdom... We need to understand there will be tribulation and we need patience. And tonight I'm, I'm, I'm helping somebody. We're living in a time and in a season that the kingdom of God is increasing. Uh, the kingdoms of this will become the kingdoms of our God. But we understand that we, we understand it's a time also. These work hand in hand. If we talk about the kingdom, there will be tribulation and you will need patience. And I encourage somebody that you will be patient in Jesus. If you say you are in Jesus, you know tribulation will come. You, you'll understand. You will need, need patience. And we need that, that encouragement at this moment so that you can hold on. That I believe that as we speak out of this book of Revelation, that it's going to encourage you tonight. And... We need to focus because if I speak to you about the, the book of Revelation and, and what I also felt about the book of Song of Solomon, it's about one thing. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I hope after tonight that where you are at home, what, wherever you are, wherever you are in the world, um, in England, America, South Africa, Benoni, whoever, wherever you are, may you encounter the presence of God in a tangible way where you are listening. Open up your heart. God is preparing us. He's preparing a bride that is 
going to stand up in the end times that have understanding and a bride that knows who she is. If the, if the church don't understand who she is, she wants to be rescued. And that's why we see a church that just want to, to be taken out, take us out of all these problems, take us out of all the nonsense, what is happening in our nations. God, just come and take us away. We want to be rescued. And I, I want to say, we see a church that don't understand who she is, but there is a new people standing up. I know you are here because there's a cry on the inside of you. I'm talking to people. There's a hunger. There's a desperation. There's a, um, there's a cry on the inside of me saying, I want more. I want to see God move. He's waiting for a bride. He's waiting for a body. He's waiting for a family that will begin to understand. We don't need to be rescued. I understand who I am as the corporate body standing in unity. We will release a voice in this season and not just uh, to release a voice of complaining and of wailing and and giving up we're going to be a voice that will release god's sound in the in the um, earth realm that will shake nations and we're going to be a part of it and i'm excited about everyone as you are part of awakening true image and likeness because Every word that is going out and what Prophet Didi is releasing and every speaker is just to awaken you. We're going to see a bride that will look like him. But tonight as we start looking at, at the book of, of Revelation, it's more, of, more than just a book about but it's also an uncoming king. I'm here to tell you more than just the coming events. And no many, so many people are uh, uh, reading really to see and try to predict what the future holds is more than that. I trust that when you start from tonight, when you start reading Revelation, new interpretation will come into your life and we will see the unveiling of the coming King because more than a revelation that was given to John, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's how Revelation 1 1 starts the revelation of Jesus Christ. And that word revelation, the word is um, um, apocalypse. And the moment you talk about apocalypse, immediately people think that word means something terrible is about to happen. But that word apocalypse means unveiling, opening up, and breaking through. This is the lifting of the cover. This is what revelation in this season. This is not the time to give up. On, on the church, give up on yourself, give up on your ministry, give up on life, your marriage. This is the time of the unveiling, the lifting of the cover, the pulling back of the curtains. This is what's happening. That's why it's so important that we understand revelation. He's pulling back the, cart, the, the curtains, opening up the breaking through of Jesus Christ. Uh, I hope I hear somebody shouting, Jesus is breaking through. Not my ministry, not my... No. Jesus Christ is breaking through because revelation is one thing. It's all about Jesus. It's not about the Antichrist and whatever some people will make it out to be. The book is all about Jesus. That's why I'm getting so excited. Song of Solomon, it's about Jesus, about his bride and what he's doing in his bride. So get ready as we're talking. And I, I believe as, as John was writing this, this letter to the church, to the, um, and as they in the in the first century was reading this um, book of Revelation, this letter that was written to the churches, the question was: As you go through it, who are you worshiping? That's the question. Who will you give your ally, uh, allegiance to? The question is: Are you going to worship the beast, or are you going to worship the lamb? See, the beast is is seductive offer of pleasure and wealth and that's what the beast is producing or releasing in this season and we need to make a decision and the question is tonight who are you worshiping are you worshiping the beast or are you worshiping the slaughtered lamb who will shape my lifestyle the lamb wants to change your lifestyle we're going to be different we are going to be different because um, we're going to see differently and the last book in the Bible, he's calling us to a radical lifestyle of commitment, and he's calling us 
to, to loyalty to the Lamb in a world worshipping the beast. And everyone listening to me, I want to encourage, we will be loyal. Doesn't matter what happens. Doesn't matter what we are going through. We will go through tribulations and we will need patience if we say we are in Jesus and we are part of the kingdom. That's what John said in the beginning in verse 9 of Revelation 1. But we will be a loyal people that will, that will um, be loyal to the Lamb and we will not worship the, the beast. And then there needs to come an understanding. And to, to understand, you need to hear so that you can see. Through the whole book of Revelation, 40 times in the Revelation, John said, I saw. 32 times I heard. I'm here to tell you, listen and look. As I'm releasing, I, I pray Holy Spirit will come into your house in a powerful way. And I trust Holy Spirit will use my common words, my, uh, my lack of maybe of communication, but may you hear spirit, may you hear the, the, the wisdom of God being released th through my voice and listen and look. And you will see it um, in, in Revelation 1-7, 1 verse 18, 4 verse 2, 5 verse 5, all this is in the book of Revelation 14 verse 1. 19 verse 11, and I'll go back to it just later on. But you will see that he, he listened and he looked. Because we need to see things in the light of Jesus Christ. See your family in the light of Jesus Christ. You need to, to listen and begin to see that there's an unveiling, of, a pulling back of the curtain. Jesus Christ is about to break through in our lives. And John says, look. This is the encounter of the book of, of, of Revelation. Um, and he says, look, because we are not seeing clearly. That's the problem. That's why Revelation is speaking to us tonight. And John over and over is saying to us, look, look, listen and look. I'm, I'm going to show you certain things. And you need to look. If you only watch CNN, if you just read certain newspapers, certain things on, on Facebook, um, that's why the reason we don't understand what is happening in our countries and we don't see clearly. Um, but he says there's, there's things that we don't see. And he says, look, there's an open, there's a door open in heaven. And that's why my theme for tonight is heaven is open. I pray for an open heaven over your business, an open heaven over your family, over your marriage, over everything. Every aspect of your life, your ministry, I declare over Marble Hall an open heaven. I declare over um, every city that is represented here, over Torva, over whatever city you are representing. I declare heaven is open. And, and we need to understand that that door in heaven, that other dimension of the universe is so very close. It's at hand. I'm here to declare and say to you, it is open. It is open. The enemy will tell you, no, we need to fight. and We need to try to get it. It is open. Revelation is declaring to us, to you and me tonight. It is open. This is what the, day, what the gospel is declaring tonight. The door into heaven is open. That's why we can boldly go. It's the time of evangelism. It's the time to go because the, the door into heaven is open. And see, John is saying to us, we need to see what is going on in heaven so that we better can understand what is happening on earth. That's why we are struggling. What is happening? We are confused. We are complaining. We, we don't understand what is happening at this moment. What is happening in the nation? It's load shedding and all the stuff happening in South Africa. But when we begin to see, begin to see not in just in the natural, but begin to see with our eyes, into the super, into heaven, because the door to heaven is open. We will begin to understand what is happening on earth. See, if we can see what is what is going on in heaven, we can live in a new way on earth. So I pray that God open up your eyes, that you will see into heaven. The door is open. The door is open. We need to just open eyes to see. And I believe after tonight, I pray Holy Spirit will, will touch your eyes. And you're going to see, not just looking in the natural um, um, 
at this moment of what you can see, what is happening just with the physical eyes, but see what is happening in heaven. And, and you will see out of revelation what he once saw because he wants you to see what he sees. And then you will begin to understand what God is busy doing on earth. And I believe there's coming a new understanding. Some of you were confused. Some of you were feeling 2023 started and there's no way. You don't see your way out. It's the same old things for the last two, three years. But I want to declare to you, you're going to see into heaven. The door is open. The, the enemy has lied to you. Circumstances has lied to you. You've, you've listened to the lie of the enemy. And I'm here to come to you with truth. The door to heaven is open and you're going to see it. And there's coming understanding, insight, and you're going to take a step. For too long, you're going in circles, going around the same mountain, but there's coming direction. You've seen something. Um, you've heard and now you're looking. And you've heard and now you're looking. And now you're seeing with new eyes. And listen, it says in Revelation 4, for after this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. Revelation 11, 11 verse 19. And the temple of God was opened in heaven. And, and there was seen in his temple the ark of the testament. He saw the ark. Revelation 15, 5. And after that, I looked and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was open. All over. Revelation is declaring the heaven is open. And then Revelation 9 verse 11. And I saw heaven open. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire. I want to tell you, we're going to see that flame of fire, the, and, and that fire. I'm, I'm here to remind you the fire of passionate love. We're going we're gonna to see, look into his eyes. I want to I wanna say, may you see into heaven. May you see his eyes. And he's looking at you. If you I don't want to go to Song of Solomon. Then I will keep you up the whole night. Because it's an amazing Song of Solomon. But you will see he's looking at you with passionate love. And that flame of fire. And just as in the book of Acts, tongues of fire came upon them. Tongue speaks of language. The language, the fire speaks of passionate love. We're going to speak the language of passionate love because we've seen something. And then let me just, let me go on. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Family, I hope that you start seeing. Heaven is open. Open. And there's five windows that I quickly want to see tonight that, that is open, that we need to look into. And probably I won't have time to go into all five of the, of the windows. Um, there's just too much. I'm going to just touch one or two. But you will see window one through the whole of Revelation, five windows. But the first window open, John saw. And it says in, in Revelation 1, verse 9, up to chapter 3 to verse 22, he says there, I heard behind me a loud voice. And when John turned, and when John turns, he sees seven golden lampstands. And this seven golden lampstands, he discovered were the seven churches that, was, that were in Asia. And now he saw the risen and glorified Jesus standing in the middle of his churches and he's addressing certain crucial dimensions of what we can learn and i don't have time to go into that but john if we look at this situation as john was writing this letter john is in prison he's 80 about 80 years old the the christians at that time are going through difficult times they are they were confusion they were discouraged they were afraid the the people of god were harassed by soldiers they were losing their businesses and their homes many Christians were murdered and in the midst of everything there was heresy and immorality in in the congregations 
And here is John. And the Bible says, and John was in the spirit. And as John was in the spirit, just, just think with me for a moment. With all that happening, John as a pastor was caring for the churches. And now he's in prison with all the things that is happening at that moment in his time. Yeah, he's in the spirit. What is God saying to him at that, at that moment? How is Jesus responding? How is he speaking and saying to John, do this? This is the answer. And maybe we, we thought maybe Jesus would have spoken to him and said, here's a new set of new programs. The churches are struggling. Um, it's difficult for Christians. They are losing their businesses. Here's some new programs. Here are, are some new ideas, John, that you can just, if they do this, the churches will do well. Maybe we're thinking it's time to form a resistance movement. Come, let us stand up. Let us empower, rise up against what is happening at this moment. Maybe we feel we must stand up and begin to displace the, the, the worldly people in public office. Maybe we, we are thinking we need just more money. We can just get more money in the church. But here is John. He's in the spirit. And what was God's response? Response to this whole situation. He gave John a powerful vision of who Jesus is. We need, we need in this time and everything we're happening in our world, we need to have a powerful vision of who Jesus is. And John had a, has had this great opportunity walking with Jesus. He knew the Jesus that did miracles at the first. We saw him feeding thousands of people. He saw Jesus spoke to the storm and the storm became still. He saw Jesus raising Lazarus. But now John is in a new situation and in the midst of fear. John needed more. And what he needed, he needed to see Jesus. He needed to see Jesus as he is now. He knew Jesus as he was when he was on earth. But now we need, John need a new revelation of who he is now. And I believe, get ready family. God is about to reveal a uh, a, a new dimension of his glory once again pastor francois you are opening up you, i see you stepping into that new dimension i see the the fire of the father you releasing to you into taking you into that new dimension and you're going to see him like you've never seen him before and again to everyone listening to me all over the world i'm declaring you are going to have an encounter with god that is gonna it cannot compare to the previous encounters you will you will see something totally different and we are excited and i release it over over you but john saw and when he saw this jesus in a new dimension not the jesus that he was um, that he thought he knew now in a new dimension he saw him the bible says when he when he saw him he turned and then firstly he saw seven golden lampstands like we said and the son of man standing in the midst the glorified son of man in in the middle of his churches he's standing he's not standing above looking down he's not standing on the outside looking in and that to me He's standing in the midst of his church, in the midst of what is happening in our world in 2023. He's standing. Once again, he's standing in the midst of his church. He's standing in the midst of your situation, in the midst of chaos in your business, chaos in your family, chaos in your marriage. He's standing in the midst and he says, I know what is happening in you and amongst you. I know your hard work. I know your struggles. I know your fears. I know your emptiness. And this risen and living Jesus is moving among his people like never before. Right now, he's moving. And I believe that you're feeling his touch, his anointing as he's moving, touching you in the midst of everything happening at this moment. And here is John. He saw um, seven lampstands, seven churches, and the Son of Man standing in the midst of, of, of that 
And then he said, and he tried to describe him. And he said, he is like. I hope, as I'm just quickly going through this, that your eyes will be open. The first window he wants to open, may you have a new and a fresh revelation. Don't depend upon old revelation. What, what, use, what you used to and what you know, what you um, thought you know about him. There's a new revelation. Like John, you're going to meet him in a new and a fresh way. And here is John. And he said, he's trying, he's trying to describe. And he says, he's like. And we're going to see the great unseen reality, the reality of that, of his presence. And he says, I'm taking you in. And he's showing him. And he says, he was, he had a, he was clothed in the rope to his feet. And just speaking about the high priest's robe, saying that, that he's, he's standing and interceding with that as that robe to his feet, the priestly and the kingly robe of authority. And it says, and across his breast, he was girded with a golden girdle. If it's around his waist, it's meaning he's getting ready to do something. If it's girded, girded around your breast, it's meaning he's resting. He's declaring he saw Jesus standing in the midst of his church and he said, it is finished. The, the priestly garments declared, I have done it. I've done it. It's the finished work and I'm ruling as, as a king. He says his head and his hair white like wool, like snow. Just saying he's the ancient of days, the ageless, the infinite wise. The perfectly clean. He says his eyes were like a flame of fire. Once again, passionate love. Absolutely pure and intensively purifying. His feet were like burnished bronze. He's strong, unmovable, burning away evil wherever he walks. Family, Kate, I pray that you will start to hear and that you will look. Look through that first window. See him as he stands with his feet. He's strong, unmovable, and Burning away evil wherever he walks. His voice is like the sound of many waters. It's distinct. It's drowning out all the other voices and drowning out the voices of the, the lie. And the enemy is shouting at you at this, at this moment, telling you lies and saying things, about, saying things about you. But the voice, his voice is going to be like the sound of many waters. You're going to hear it. His right hand. He's got seven stars. And it's saying the universe is his. He is the ruler of the cosmos. He is the king of kings. And he is the lord of lords. And out of his, out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. He's able to cut every line. And he, and he will bring freedom with the truth that will come out of his mouth. His face was like the sun shining in its strength. And it just his overwhelming brilliance spilling over unto his people. Can you see him? As he's standing in the midst of, of his people, in the midst, can you encounter and, and see him as he's standing there in his splendor? And, he, and here we see, and as, as John saw him, the Bible says he fell as one dead. And then the Bible says, and Jesus put his right hand upon him. See, the right hand is the hand that is visible. God's right hand is the hand that you see physically or sensibly moving the left hand as is the unseen hand in song of solomon it says and his left hand was under head and the right hand was was visible and once again i don't have time but we see the right hand the visible hand of god and i want to say to you tonight feel at this moment the right hand of god being placed upon you feel at this moment the right hand the visible seen hand of God touching you at this at this moment and when he touched John he said to him stop being afraid stop being afraid and he said I was dead but look once again yes they were look I am alive forevermore and I hold the keys of death family can you see are you looking can you see this wonderful amazing Lord Jesus Standing, he's touching you at this moment with the, with his right hand, and he's saying to you, "Don't be afraid." I declare it in your household at this moment. Let all fear go in the name of Jesus. You will not be afraid. 
see what God is about to do. Let me go on. The time is running. Sure. And then window two. It's in Revelation 4, verse 1 to 11. And it, it says that I looked and behold the door standing open in heaven. And now we see John. He sees a throne with someone sitting on the throne. Someone on a, with a, in his right hand. He had a scroll sealed with seven seals. And, and they were crying. John said, who can open it? And they say, nobody. And then they said, there's somebody. The lion out of the tribe of Judah. That's triumph. And he is worthy to open the this, this scroll. But when John turned to see his lion. And when he turned to see the lion that, that was revealed. The lion became a lamb. And the lamb comes up to the one who sits on the throne. And he took the scroll. And he opened the seven seals. And, and everything changed at that moment when the, the lion became the lamb. And it was declared, and this is what Revelation 11, 15 also declared, the kingdoms of the world has become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he will reign forever and ever. And once again, John is saying, look, there's a throne um, well, that was standing open in heaven. And they were sitting one on the throne. On the throne and who is the one sitting on the throne here's another description on the one sitting on the throne the word says he was like a jasper stone and sardius in appear an appearance jasper it's, it's a perfect symbol jasper is a translucent stone like glass it's revealing and yet concealing sardius it um, it's depending upon the light that that shines and the colors of sardius Sardius ranges from yellow to red to green. And what is this image telling us? It speaks of beauty, of majesty, and radiance. Family, look through the second window. The window is open. It says heaven is open. We see a throne. Somebody's on the throne. And we see his beauty, his majesty. And, and the one is altogether on the throne. He's lovely. He's dazzling beyond description. Can you see him? And the living creatures are declaring, He is the Lord God Almighty. Tonight there's a shout. There's a shout. He is Lord God Almighty. He's almighty. Almighty. I'm declaring it to you. The, the world, the devil, the kingdoms of this world, men are doing. He is. He is almighty. And why? They are declaring. Elders are singing. That, um, and they are worshiping. Um, declaring around his throne that he that is holy and they are worshiping the one who sits upon the throne and and verse over uh, chapter 4 verse 8 it says day and night the living creatures never stop saying over and over holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come i want to say to you when you go to worship on a sunday when you go to your church to go to worship. We are entering a service already in progress. We go to church on a Sunday and we think worship starts. I want to say that we are just getting part of a worship service that is uh, running now for thousands and thousands of years. And we are hearing and we are declaring with them, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Worship does not begin with us and it will not end with us. So remember, when we gather for worship, we step into a worship service that has begun a long time ago. A long time. And we're just getting part of it. But we are just getting part. And they are declaring that He is holy. He is holy. But as John was looking, he saw somebody on the throne. And tonight we can be thankful. Tonight, somebody is on the throne. There is a headquarters. Somebody, there is... There is somebody in control. And look, he's sitting on the throne. If he was not sitting on the throne at this moment, but you need to see it. You cannot just hear it, hear me say it. Let us get a revelation. Let us see him in the midst of his churches. Jesus, the amazing one, standing with the robe, his hair white, eyes like fire, his voice like my, many waters. He's got the stars in his right hand. And, and, he's, and we see him and see 
the, the, the Father sitting on His throne um, in His glory and in His splendor. And He's on the throne. He's on the throne. And that gives us hope. They're sitting someone, someone bigger than the whole universe, someone bigger than all the might, evil can master, ma master, almighty is, is being declared. And we declare with heaven and every creature, we are declaring that he is mighty. And, and the mighty one is the, is the lion that overcomes by being a lamb. This is so powerful. You need to understand this. The lion has triumphed. Because we've seen that he has turned to a lamb and he was slain. Listen to me, family. As we see all this happening, we understand the lion does not get to the throne by, by being a lion. See, this is the secret of history. Discover this. It is the lion. The lion gets to the throne by being a lamb. The lion wins by being slaughtered. And can I tell you, when you see the Bible speaking about the lamb, he says he had seven eyes and seven horns. Speaking eyes speaks of wisdom and horns speaks of wisdom. He's not weak. The, he's the sordid lamb. He had said perfect wisdom and perfect strength. That is who he is. But Revelation 5 is telling us that the power to overcome is in the weakness of sacrificial love. There's a movement coming to our world of sacrificial love. There's a church about to stand up and we're going to speak the language of passionate love and nations are going to be shaken. And it's not the lion, it's going to be the heart of a lamb that's going to change everything. The song was sung because they saw, and that's why angels are crying, holy holy that he became the lamb that was slaughtered and they were declaring worthy are you to take the scroll and to break its seals for you were slain and purchased for god with your blood men and women from every tribe and tongue and people and nation and you have made them a kingdom and priests to our god and they will reign upon the earth and here the song is declaring three things he has purchased us he has made us a kingdom of priests and we will reign with him. When will we reign? Now. They, the translation said, I will reign. But I want to say, they said the correct is, you are already reigning. You, the day that Jesus was slain, you were purchased. You have been made a king and you are reigning. Now you are reigning. The lamb is reigning right now. And his people are reigning with him now it's time it's time to to wake up to understand the king is reigning from his cross he's the lamb that was slain and he reigns from the cross and we will reign with him in the same way not as lions but as lambs and the the cross is the ground of our salvation it's the pattern of our salvation understand this because of the cross the war is over the devil is defeated and the old man is dead hmm, I, I need to give you a moment i need to give you a moment you need to hear the war is over the devil is defeated and the old man is dead and it's from this cross and the cross is the throne from which he is reigning. And he's calling us to join him on the throne. And he's calling us to take up our cross daily. Take up your cross. You will reign from the throne through the cross. And he's making us a kingdom um, of heaven that will allow the kingdom of heaven to come on earth. Family, my time is running out. Sure, where's time going? Let me go on quickly. Window 3, I'm just going to mention here. Window 3 says, it's in Revelation 11, 19, verse 19, until chapter 15 to verse 4. And the temple of God, which is in heaven, was opened. And John saw in that temple the Ark of the Covenant. And there was a war started. And this is amazing. If you read this, that he saw a, a dragon, he saw a woman, and he saw a child. And this is the, the 
day Jesus was born. This is the picture that that Jesus was born and the dragon was trying to get the child, but the child was taken to him, speaking about, about Jesus. And now the dragon is after the woman, but the woman was given two wings of an eagle and he took her into the desert. God is about to do things. He's given you eagle wings and the dragon will not destroy, destroy you. And there's so much more. Um, but I want you to hear and look. Look through window one. See the one standing in the midst of his church. Window, window two, seeing him sitting on the throne, uh, ruling. Yeah, declare with creatures that he's holy, that he's worthy, that 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 he that, that he has purchased you, that he has called you, that you are reigning now, right now. I'm reminding you, the war is over. The devil is defeated, and the old man is dead. Window four. Um, once again, John saw uh, in chapter 15, verse 5 and 19, verse 10. I look and the temple of the tabernacle of testimony uh, and heaven was open. And here John saw seven angels with seven bowls of judgment. And you can go on and there's so much in, in, in that. And then there's window 5, um, chapter 19, verse 11 till chapter 22, verse 7. And here we see everything coming together in Revelation. And we see the city of God, the new Jerusalem coming down. And he says, and I saw heaven open. And I'm declaring to you the heaven, the door to heaven is open. And when the door to heaven is open, what will you see? Because he said, what will you see? And you will see the whole time. John, what you will see is not the Antichrist and what he is doing and whatever. You will see a person. You will see him on a horse. And he's opening our eyes to behold. Him. It's a command. John gave us a command to say, look, look. And the last book on the Bible is commanding us. Initially, not to go, not to be, not to be a witness or to love or even to overcome. The first thing you need to do, and if you can just hear that tonight, is to look. And when by implication you start to look, you will begin to see what John sees. And when you see what John sees, you will go. You will be. You will be that witness. You will love and you will overcome. We are going to be an overcoming church. But first we need to see, and I hope tonight, as I quickly went through certain things, that it stirred your heart, that it moved something on the inside of you, and that you will understand the door to heaven is open. And he's the claim. It's open. And he wants you to look. And who will you see? You will see the Lord Jesus Christ. Clear revelation. See him sitting on the throne. I'm glad on the throne. Everything is in control. He's got your family in his hands. He's got your situation, your sickness. Tonight, his healing is flowing from his throne. The lamb is, is speaking into your life. The blood of Christ is touching you. Maybe you're listening at this moment and there's sickness in your body. I declare now by the blood of the lamb that I declare that you are healed in the name of of Jesus. He's putting his right hand upon you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Receive his healing right now. Receive the word from heaven that says you're going to make it. This is not the end. This is not at the end of your life. This, this is just the beginning. He's about to do something new because you're looking and you're seeing and all you want to say, I want to see him. He's the amazing one. He's the glorious one. And when we see, we will overcome. And I'm closing tonight. As an overcoming church, what will happen? Because he said, writing letters to his church, seven letters to seven churches, he said to them, I know your works, meaning I know what is happening in your life. He said to him, you need to overcome. It's necessary. And then he says, hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Those three things. He said every time, I know your works. You need to overcome. And hear what the Spirit of the Lord, of the Lord is saying. 
Let us be ready. God is speaking in this season, getting his bride ready. Let us hear what he's saying. We will be an overcoming, over overcoming church. And he's speaking to us, dealing with certain things because he knows our works. And he's speaking to and dealing with certain things. But he says, when you overcome, and I'm closing with this, when you overcome, this will happen. And that's what he's sp speaking about. Go back to, to Revelation 2, verse, uh, chapter 2, chapter 3, where he's speaking to the, to the churches. And every time he said, when you overcome, this will happen. When you overcome, this will happen. And I'm speaking this over your life. You are becoming an overcoming church because you've looked, you've heard, and you've looked, and you've seen him. And that's all you're going to see. And when you see him, you'll become that overcoming church. And that overcoming church, this is what he promises. You will eat of the tree of life. You will not be hurt by the second death. You will eat hidden manna and you will receive a white stone with a new name. God is giving somebody a new name. They've written over you failure. You're receiving a new name. Sickness is over your life. There's a new name of healing over your life. You are receiving Overcoming church, hear me, bride of the Lord Jesus Christ, as you look into the fiery eyes of passionate love, he's declaring his love to you, and his love will sustain you, and his love will hold you. And he says, I'm going to give you a new name. And he says, when you overcome, you will have power over nations, power over nations. And he says, I will give you the morning star. What's the morning star? That's another sermon. Quickly, the morning star, the it's still dark. It's when the nighttime, when it's at its darkest, the morning star will come out. It's still dark, but the morning star is announcing day is on the way. I'm saying the morning star. <clears throat> Yo, there's an anointing. The morning star is declaring to somebody day is coming. Somebody needs to hear in the darkest night. Open your eyes. Look, see the morning star coming up in your life. And he's declaring, this is a new day coming. He says, when you overcome, you will receive white garments and your name will be written in the book of life. You will be a pillar in his temple and you will sit on the throne with him. Family, I trust that you just experience his glory. I pray that, that it will just overwhelm you. I pray that, that he will take your breath away. And that he will strengthen you. That he will surround you with his presence. And when you see him, he's singing over you, declaring a new song over you. Declaring what he's about to do in your life. Let heaven touch you at this moment. And I'm going to pray for you as, as we close. Maybe some of you are going through the most darkest time of your life. I pray now as we are just standing in the gap for each other, we want to we wanna say we love you. We care for you. Thank you for being part of awakening through image and likeness. And we thank God for this family, that we are family. And, and I, I want to say keep on praying for each other. Let us be a family that will stand together and that we will be that example and that we will be loyal to the Lamb. And let us pray. And I pray that heaven will touch you at this moment and that you will experience His glory and His anointing. Can we just pray? Father God, at this moment, I thank you for your word. I thank you in my limited way, my lack of communication. I thank you that Holy Spirit, that you are helping me, that you are making this word spirit and life. And as I pray now for your precious people, I pray that they will feel the warmth of your touch. I pray that you will touch them, put your right hand now upon them. Speaking to them, don't be afraid. I pray that you will open their eyes, that they see you in a new way. I pray that they will see you alone, ruling. I pray for, for us that we will be a worshipping people, that we will know that we've been purchased by the blood, that we are precious, that we can 
can stand in victory because of what Christ has done for us on the cross. Thank you that people will experience it now. I thank you that the, that weight of heaviness will go now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for miracles that are happening at this moment. But I only desire more than pursuing miracles, more than pursuing things. I want to see you. I want to see you. I pray for this, for each and every one at this moment, listening wherever they are. Open their eyes that they will see you. We are desperate. We are crying out. I want to see you. Father, take us deeper. Take us higher. Take us into this intimate relationship with you that will change us forever and ever. I bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I thank you, family. Thank you for your time. It's been, it was a wonderful view. And I release your life, the glory and the presence of God, and go and be a bride that looks like Him. Well, praise God. Thank you, Pastor Darby. It is wonderful to have you with us. Um, let me just bring him back here so we can just say, hello, where are we now? What is going on here? Okay, let's do this. Anyway, there we go. Fantastic technology. Well, Pastor Darby, thank you for this word. Um, it has really been a, a, a word that stirs our faith and builds our faith. And um, yes, let's see Jesus and let's see him in all that he's done for us. You know, we tend to forget. It's like you said, and I like what you said at the beginning. We go and we... People read Revelation and we want to figure out the puzzle. When is this going to happen? When is that going to happen? All of that kind of stuff. But in the end, it's it's Jesus. And if, as, well, as long as yeah. we keep our focus on Jesus and we don't get ourselves entwined in all of these spider webs and stuff that is out there, we can move forward and we can do the things that he has uh, asked us to do. So thank you so much for a great, great message. Um, I am encouraged and I know a lot of people on the platform tonight is encouraged. Uh, we love you. I know I'll be seeing you soon, Pastor Madeleine and yourself. But thank you once again, Pastor Darby, for being on the platform. And uh, may the Lord bless you richly and His glory surround you in every, every way. Thank you, uh, Pastor Jock. It was once again great. And I just bless you. Thank you for, for everything you are doing for this ministry and your faithfulness. We honor you. We thank you for your life. And we bless you and your family, and it's always a privilege being part of this amazing, amazing ministry. We love you all, and thank you. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Darby. I'm going to take you out now, and I'm going to close this uh, meeting. Thank you so much, Pastor Darby. Well, everyone, thank you so much for being on this program tonight. I know that you've learned tonight. I certainly am going to listen again to this message, uh, go back into seeing looking at what every window means and just understanding exactly how i can adjust my view and and walk further uh you know with the lord and with uh you know with the things that he has given us but thank you for being here tonight we love you next week we're going to have another exciting guest speaker on here one of our atel hub members so please join us once again next week tuesday at half past seven right here on awakening tree image and likeness it is uh it's going to be good uh, i know she is uh her nerves is uh, eating already at her, but I know it's going to be a good one. But thank you for being here. God bless you. May this week be a tremendously great week. May you go and enjoy the glory of the Lord. You are in His glory. Just uh, reach out and enjoy what He's got, got for you. And, uh, you know, step, walk by faith and you will achieve what He has said before you. But God bless you. We love you. Have a tremendously wonderful uh, week further. Thank you for joining us here on Awakening Tree Image and Likeness. God bless you. I trust that you've enjoyed this broadcast with us this evening here on Awakening True Image and Likeness. 
If you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please go and hit those buttons there and go and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Awakening Dreams and Likeness, found under Diddy Ministries. Also, thank you so much for each and every person that's supporting this ministry financially. We are praying that the Lord really blesses you out of your socks and that the Lord's face shines upon you and that you will experience the favor of the Lord in an immeasurable way. Our app, Awakening Tree Image and Likeness, ATL, is also available on all the stores on iOS and also Android. You can just download the app and then have a wonderful supply of our material. And you can do Bible reading. You can do a ton of stuff there. And we're still evolving also the app. And uh, you will enjoy that app thoroughly. God bless you. May God's face shine upon you and give you abundant peace.